Spread your tea. The doings of Hamish and Dougal. Today, look who's stalking. There, that's the shelf put up. <laughs> Jings, this is a noisy screwdriver. <laughs> Hello, a talking screwdriver. <laughs> this is devil's work. Dougal, do the words kettle, pot, bags, milk, sugar and teacup bring anything to mind? Mm, of course, Hamish. You'll have had your tea. Oh. <laughs> No, I've no time for that. Oh. No. <laughs> Look here. Have you seen what's in this morning's paper? Goodness me, I didn't even know you had a cat. Oh! No. <laughs> Not that paper. This paper. Uh, oh. Oh, look at that. Local woman bursts into flames. No, no, no. You're looking under court and social. Oh, oh here. Dog eats garage. No, no. <laughs> it's not in the sports section oh. either. Front page, man. Front page, front page. Oh, that's dreadful. Price 50p. Oh. <laughs> the headline. I see it. Local paper price hike. The one underneath. Oh, at last there. Oh, yes. My Stalker Nightmare by Beyonce Nochte. Well-known housekeeper, terrorised by Laird look-alike. You don't think they mean this stalker looked like our own dear Laird? In answer to that query, just take a look at this photograph. James, he's wearing the Laird's bonnet. I'd know that feather anywhere. Aye, with good reason. Oh, you never forget a goose like that. No. <laughs> oh, that'll be my mobile... Avert your gaze while I pull it out. <laughs> Yellow. Oh! What is it? It's his lairdship. What does he want? I've no idea. Why don't you ask him? Oh, yes. <clears throat> uh, what do you want, your lairdship? Yes. 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 <coughs> yes. 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 What did he say? He just wants to know if it's me. <laughs> Ask him if he's seen his picture in the paper. Are you mad? Uh, not you, your lordship. No, no. <laughs> we all know that. We, uh, we were just noticing there was absolutely nothing about you in this morning's edition of the Glen Bugle. Oh, you saw that in the front page, did you? Yes, I agree. It's a disgrace. 50p. <laughs> oh, very good, sir. Yes, we'll see you shortly. Goodbye. So what did he want? I've no idea. He just said, get your asses up to the big hoose without delay. Oh, not another of those parties. <laughs> and the doctor said, I suggest you paint it blue and join the police. <laughs> but that's enough about me. Hamish. <laughs> Hamish, I see you've got an empty glass. Let me get you another. Oh, thank you. Another empty glass. Yes, yes, and there's more where that came from. Now, you're probably wondering why I sent for you. Well, we did think you might have explained over dinner last night or breakfast this morning. The thing is, tomorrow sees the start of the stalking season. Really? Oh, yes, and it's no secret that I'm a passionate stalker. Well, none of us are human. I can't wait to get at it again. He's frightening me. In fact, I've got a party of dedicated stalkers coming up from London. The man's a monster. Uh, Mrs. Nochty won't be safe in her own bloomers. Oh, we must warn her at once. Uh, you keep him talking. I'll escape. Oh, Dougal, before you escape, yes. a couple of days ago... <laughs> a couple of days ago, I was on my rounds when I heard voices plotting to poach my salmon. I leapt over the fence and caught my gillies in the gorse bush. <laughs> Jings! Jings indeed, Hamish. So I got rid of them. Oh, double jings. I was, was sorry to lose them. People often admired my gillies. In fact, <laughs> I used to show them off on the glorious 12th. Well, oh, you'll miss them. Not as much as I'll miss my two gamekeepers. <laughs> and this is where you come in. I need someone to help me and my guests with the stalking. Stalking? 
Stalking is against every principle that we hold most dear. But if there's money involved, you can count on us. <laughs> Let's shake on it. Oh, James, that's a funny handshake. Damn! I keep forgetting that you're not mystical members of the Royal and Ancient Order of... I've said too much. <laughs> Very good, you two. Report for duty first thing. I want to see you there at quarter past Sparrowfart. <laughs> Mrs. Knox, dear, just as soon as you've finished your early morning bungee jump. <laughs> oh, help me down! Where are those secateurs? Thank you! Well, that's brought the colour to your cheeks. <laughs> and your face has gone red as well. It's the only thing that gets my juices going in the morning. <laughs> Have you tried prunes? Prunes and bungee jumping? I don't think so. Oh. <laughs> Mrs. Nocte, have you seen this? Oh, you've got a cat. Oh! <laughs> Look at the story here, Mrs. Nocte. My Stalker Nightmare by Beyonce Nocte, well-known housekeeper terrorised by Laird Lookalike. It's all true. It all began one morning uh, as I was putting the washing out. It had caught fire when I carelessly knocked out my pipe. <laughs> Suddenly, I saw a face peeping out of the gazebo. We have an outdoor one, you know. Oh, you... <laughs> you must have been mortified. No, I was stone cold sober. <laughs> so, you never saw him again? I never saw him the first time. When he was gone, I ran into the hoose had a couple of stiff ones and got mortified off my face. <laughs> well, it was soon after that the flowers and messages began. What, every day? Or as often as I could afford to. <laughs> but he never replied. Uh, how did you know where to send them? Look, everybody knows the lad lives at the big house. Are you telling us your stalker was the lad? Yes. But how do you know? It was the phone calls. At first, it was the heavy breathing. But once I'd got that under control, I was able to hear what he said. And, and what did he say? I recorded the last call he made. Now listen. Hello, Mrs. Nocty. This is the lad speaking. Whoops, as you are. Hello, Mrs. Nocty. This is uh, Dougal speaking. Uh, not the lad. Oh, the swine. He's passing himself off. That's what I thought. <laughs> Disgusting. I say, Mrs. Nocty, as a matter of interest, uh, what knickers are you wearing today? Oh, my favourites. The cerise flannel ones with reinforced double gusset and daffodils all over them, right down to the knee. Uh, is there anyone else there I could speak to? <laughs> Who is this? It's me, uh, not the lad. Well, we're no further on. Aye, the mystery deepens. <laughs> oh, leave this to me. <laughs> Yellow. Hello, Dougal here. Yeah? Oh, really? Well, it's Dougal here as well. Ah, well, uh, glad to know neither of us is the lad. Uh, sorry, wrong number. Goodbye. Who was that? Oh, it was only me. I dialed the wrong number. <laughs> oh, I just want it to be over. I'm afraid it's only just begun, Mrs. Nochty. His lordship has invited a party of experienced stalkers up from London. Experienced stalkers? Oh, look at me. I'd better change into my little backless kilt. Oh, away well, you go then, and this time be sure to get it the right way round. <laughs> Quiet, everybody. Quiet. Now, as you know, you're all here for a weekend stalking in the Glen. Unfortunately, I won't be able to join you. Following an unfortunate stalking incident last year, I've been served with a restraining order. So I'll be staying here to keep Mrs. Nocte company as I leave you in the capable hands of Hamish and Dougal, my trusty gillies. Follow me, everyone. <laughs> Oh! 
So, Mrs. Nocty, alone at last? You certainly are. Come back! <laughs> Women, I'll never understand them. Now, before my fellow members of the Royal and Ancient Order arrive, I shall just have time to polish my regalia. Buffy, Buffy Capstick. Good Lord, disgusting Robinson. When was the last time? It's behind the bicycle sheds on Founders Day. <laughs> So it was. Did you ever find those handcuffs? Oh, did I ever? <laughs> Where have those two gillies got to? Ah, oh, here they come now. I can't wait to hear what they've got to say for themselves. Oh, there you are, gentlemen. Now, have you spotted this stag yet? We have indeed. He's just up there on the horizon. Oh, yes. Fine-looking beast. Uh, it's a fine-looking beast. Fine-looking beast. Fine-looking beast. Oh, fine-looking beast. Oh, fine yes. beast. Oh. Well, I'm glad all four of us are agreed on that. <laughs> What on earth are you doing? We're cocking our rifles. But I thought stalking was all flowers and phone calls. No, no, that's just the foreplay. <laughs> Steady on, you nearly hit me. That stag spoke. Aye, with the voice of the laird. It's coming towards us. Stop that! Stop it, it's me! We can see it's you, but why are you speaking in the laird's voice, stag? I, I am the laird. Has anyone seen Mrs. Nocty? I believe I just saw her taking a bath in a mountain stream. Splendid! Well, that's my afternoon taken care of. <laughs> Will you stop? <laughs> sorry, 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 am I? <laughs> Dougal. Yes, Hamish? That was one of the most bizarre afternoons I can ever remember. Aye. Uh, what on earth could have been behind the laird's strange behaviour? Hey, Mish, Dougal. You must have been wondering what on earth could have been behind my strange behaviour. <laughs> no, 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 we hardly noticed. Oh, completely passed us by. Nevertheless, I think I owe you an explanation. You see, I have long been a member of the Royal and Ancient Order of Stags. Ah, now it all falls into place. Oh, good. Well, now you're comfy. I'll continue. The thing is... The thing is, I was recently installed as Grand High Worshipful Pointy Antler. Aha! So that's why you were out on the moor dressed as a wild stag. No, no, that's just a little role-play thing I've got going with Mrs. Nochty. <laughs> oh, my big stag. Oh, my wee nymph of the glen. Dougal, I feel a complete gooseberry. Oh, I'm sorry, I must have left it on the chair. Oh. <laughs> so what are we going to do now? Well, I don't know about you, but I feel so happy I could sing. Dougal, do something! Oh. Oh. No! No! Yarrow! Oh. Oh. You have had your tea. The Doings of Hamish and Dougal was written and performed by Barry Cryer and Graham Garden, with Alison Steadman as Mrs. Nocty and Jeremy Hardy as the Laird. Music was arranged by John Garden and performed by Karen Street, Kylie Davies, Roz Stephen and Sean Randall. The producer was John Naismith.